hello uh, this is hepatitis b from transmission to treatment uh, this is quite an interesting topic that uh, will be very relevant to as many as there can be who want to access this uh, it is very important that you're here and i believe that for you to be on this tube uh, video rather you are actually going to learn a lot and there are lots of graphics here that will take you through. Uh, my name is Dr. Nemesi Nadep. I'm a hepatologist, also uh, one who anchors the hepatitis medicine course, uh, and which is currently highly competed for on the uh, internet. The course is very relevant to people who are working and or uh, living in developing countries and elsewhere. Right. Let's jump into the course. Now we're going to look at the six parts which are about hepatitis B. What are the symptoms? How is it transmitted? Uh, what precautions does one need to take? What do you need to do if, for example, you're found to have the infection? And then what treatments are there for you and for people uh, in general? And what do you expect if you're found to have the infection? Right, so let's start with the symptoms. A lot of patients will be without symptoms, no problems, healthy. It is only when they go for some kind of blood test that they are found to have positive test. Uh, some will have fever, and which depends on whether it's an acute or chronic infection. By the way, acute means uh, infection lasting less than six weeks, uh, sorry, six months, whereas a chronic infection uh, means infection lasting beyond six months. Nausea and vomiting, uh, mostly again within the acute phase of infection. Uh, some will have tiredness and uh, non-specific fatigue. Uh, abdominal pain can be reported by some people. Again, these are acute uh, symptoms. Some people have diarrhea and abdominal upset. Uh, and uh, very commonly for adults, they have yellow eyes or skin, depending on the complexion of their skin originally. How is uh, hepatitis B transmitted? The most common in developing countries and uh, Asia and so on uh, is actually from mother to child, which is the vertical transmission. In endemic countries, uh, we, we, we have this happening most of the time. And the problem here is that uh, this kind of infection actually is the one that proceeds to uh, chronicity, meaning that it can last longer in the body and associated with long term damages. The next uh, is about within families, uh, and this is commonly referred to as horizontal transmission, where children play with each other. Uh, commonly in families will then give infection to each other uh, and then the use of unsterile equipment uh, for tattoo, body piercing, medical or dental treatment in an unhygienic environment uh, using unsterile equipment, uh, sharing sharps, uh, toothbrushes or razor blades and, and so on, contaminated with blood, uh, transmit infection. Uh, prior to 1986, um, there were no issues about uh, screening bloods before transmit, transfusing them. And so a lot of patients got inadvertently transmitted by the infection. And sexual contact. This is much more common in developed countries. Uh, but the, there are still a few ongoing uh, acute transmissions occurring in developing countries in the era of HIV AIDS. Right, so how do you... Uh, prevent and how do you prepare to not be infected? What precautions does one need to do, in other words, to prevent themselves? Evidence exists to prove that the efficacy of hepatitis B vaccine is strong against an infection and liver cancer. Uh, the following persons would qualify. Uh, this list is not exhaustive, but if you have close contact with someone with the infection, and or you live with a partner uh, who has the hepatitis B infection, not just living and sleeping on the same bed, but a bit of more than that, intravenous drug use, and if you live in highly endemic region of the world, and if you're a healthcare worker that's involved in exposure to uh, blood and blood products. <coughs> uh, 
The next thing to do would be inform those who you live with so that they can screen and or embark on prevention methods. Avoid sex or use barrier protection methods till they are no longer infectious, either when they have a low viral load or they are on treatment. And at that point, you will be safe. If you accidentally get exposed to the infectious body fluid, do the following. One, for your clothes, remove them and uh, wash them. Uh, take a warm shower. Exposed to the skin, shower and ensure that no stains remain on the skin. Clean wounds properly if there is a wound that is exposed to it. Uh, if the blood or products spill over to your eyes, um, wash your eyes with running water and if practical, use a saline wash. Number four, if you have an inadvertent needle prick injury, confirm the status of the patient, check your status and then go for hepatitis B immunoglobulin, which is uh, if available in your center. It's rather very expensive, but it can be purchased. And then you can arrange vaccination as well. This will help prevent uh, you from getting infected, infection, sorry. Uh, with most infections occurring from mother to child in endemic regions, transmission uh, prevention from mother to child is key. And so what are the things that would happen if you uh, are pregnant and you are in, uh, then you go to the hospital, you should have a screening blood test done uh, and then plan to administer antiviral prophylactic treatment. In other words, there are potent medications which can be given to pregnant mothers who are infected uh, at week 28. This will reduce the transmission of the virus to their baby. The third thing would be once the baby is delivered, give the vaccine to the baby and complete the other immunization series. If you have access to the immunoglobulin that I mentioned before, uh, administer it to the baby at the time of delivery as well. Follow up the mother postpartum and manage uh, the hepatitis B as for any other adult. Whether the precaution here for you to consult a specialist is very important, uh, especially if you've got, you know your status already, it's important that uh, you are treated because that has a, a, an impact in decreasing the community transmission of this virus. If we attend to infected individuals, we aim to treat and then reduce the viral load, and which can then reduce the overall transmission in the community. And that would be very, very relevant to uh, survival of people. Now, let's come to the very important, interesting part, which is what to do when uh, you are told that you have the infection. Now, many people are left to themselves. They have no idea what it is and have fallen victims to lots of fallacies out there. The first and important thing to do is arrange to see a specialist in liver matters. In countries, this may be due to, uh, you might have to be sent to a clinical nurse specialist or family physician or internist. If in doubt, avoid sexual activity until you are no longer infectious and or you can use barrier methods and or if you do so, uh, if you, uh, you can go ahead and have uh, your uh, normal sexual activity if your partner has been vaccinated already. The third thing would be the doctor will arrange further tests to determine whether you are for monitoring and or for treatment. Again, the component and aspects of acute infection, chronic infection and how they treated would depend on the outcomes of your tests. Good, we've come to the point of treatment. What do you do? One, three things. General considerations, avoid alcohol, avoid the smoke, and avoid drugs. Don't take any drugs over the counter without an advice from your physician. Eat a balanced diet. Don't avoid protein diet as people are falsely taught. Chronic hepatitis B infection, monitor. One, give antiretroviral and antiviral medications. Currently, tenofovir is what is used for adults and entecovir for children. Sometimes there is a swap between in view of resistance or other problems. For those with acute uh, infection, there is no need for any treatment using medications. Most people would survive and will recover without that, without the treatment. It is when it becomes chronic, lasting beyond six months, that treatment is essential.
what do you expect again? Cure. You expect cure if this infection was acute and acquired in adult. Because the immune system of an adult is competent enough to clear the virus. When it progresses to chronicity, then it becomes an important thing to suppress the virus. So we expect that if you go through the process well, you should achieve a suppressed viral load and hence truncated progression of disease. This is evidenced by an undetectable uh, viral load. You can also expect no change in some patients who will never have any serious disease and of progression. Many of these patients would die from some, under, some disease that is not related to hepatitis B. Unfortunately, some others will progress to have liver cancer. This is usually the outcome if the hepatitis B viral DNA is very high and they do not access care for themselves and or surveillance. We stop here and I'm inviting you to uh, subscribe uh, to our website and or even the video here. And uh, I believe that you will have access to a lot of materials that would not uh, impair your progress. You will know a lot more. Keep following us, subscribe, and I'll be happy to meet you again. Thank you.